Hey everyone, and welcome back to this humble abode of a channel that I call Centrifugi. Today, I'm sure if you saw the thumbnail, you know that we are doing another tier list. I'm continuing on my tier list shenanigans, and we're doing Gears of War. Now, Gears of War is a franchise that I've been infatuated with since the first game released in 2006. And unlike a lot of other people out there, I've like almost every single game in this franchise outside of a couple that I'll I'll get into in a bit but I think a lot of what the coalition has done with these games is pretty decent maybe not what I would have chosen to do with it but I still think they work within the context of this franchise. So here, as you can see, is the tier list. I changed it a little bit from last time. I think it actually just took out a category. So we have absolutely slaps, beefy slaps, just not as hard, a little meh, missed the mark. How about no? And basically how this works is I'm going to be taking the intros and ranking just them. That means that I'm going to be doing the opening cinematic if there is a cutscene that goes into the first main mission and that's it. So how it works is I'm doing the first act of every chapter Chapter. Not the entire chapter, because that is one long ass intro, which is not really an intro, just that's the way the story goes in these games. So as you can see down here, I have them all in order of release, not really the timeline, which is exactly what I did in my last video. So you can see obviously Gears Tactics is at the end there, but just based on release, because realistically in the timeline that would go before Gears 1, because I think Gears Tactics is like 12 or 13 years before Gears 1. Pretty sure, I can't remember. I think that is accurate. And then I also have Hive Busters here. You may be like, whoa, Hive Busters isn't really its own game, you have to have the base game of Gears 5, which is true, but technically Gears Hive Busters is a solo story that doesn't really tie into Gears 5 all that much, and it's more based on the comic, so it is here as its own game. So now that I've explained how this wishy-washy idea works, let's get into it. And we're gonna start obviously with the game that started it all, Gears 1. I think the thing that Gears of War 1 really sets up and is carried through the rest of the franchise well is the really grungy, dark aesthetic, the depressing, crushing atmosphere and art design. Also, at this point in time, you know, in this the gaming industry, starting a character off in prison is really cliched. I think Beth Bethesda has used up that charm to a, an insane degree. But I will say here it really works because Marcus has clearly been put away for a long time and the enemies are literally surrounding him. There's enemies on top of his cage trying to get in to eat him. And he is totally unfazed. And it also makes you ask questions. Why is Marcus in prison? What the hell did he do to earn a spot in here? Good intrigue, gets you right to it. Dom breaks you out of prison, gives you your armor, and it also there's kind of a contrast between this guy is in prison. He also tells Dom that he should free all the other prisoners, showing that he has a sympathetic side. So we're no, we know we're not playing as a terrible person. And you can tell that Marcus doesn't really want to go back into this fight. I think he'd still happily sit in a cell, but he's called upon to serve. And I love his his little dialogue where he just goes, "Ah, oh, shit, that's great." Welcome back to the army, soldier. Shit. Immediately, too, after it gets you right into the action, it paints a picture of a really desperate losing war. If High in Command is willing to pardon everybody in prison to get them out to be able to fight, it means that they are losing a battle that is pretty much already lost, which really tells you the stakes right out of the gate. So the tutorial is really effective, it tells you everything you need to know, and also presents scenarios for you to be able to use all of the gameplay mechanics, and it doesn't feel too handholdy. The important thing it does for this, I guess, a new IP is it kind of just gets you right into the action. And it's also kind of very cinematic with the towers falling over as you're fighting the grubs coming out of the ground and the helicopters coming in to swoop in to pick you up. It all just feels very responsive and I think it was one of the first games to actually do a competent cover shooter. And then you have that final takeoff of the cinematic at the end where you run to the helicopter and the corpse comes out of the ground and it all just, it just works really well. I think it's a really solid intro as to where it should be right Ah, oh, God, I'm not. It's the first in the franchise, but it's also just a good, quick intro. But also, the longer intros are good too, so. Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna put it. Oh, my computer's having a, a fucking issue here. I think I'm gonna put it in beefy. I think that's a good spot for it. We'll see, we'll see, I don't know, but we're mo gonna move on to Gears 2 because that's what comes next. Gears of War 2 has a really great cinematic that shows you the world, the story, it recaps 
the story for anyone who hadn't played the first game, and also it sets up the situation that happened right after the light mass bomb in the first game, showing you that indeed the locusts did not die, you literally just pissed them off, so they're coming out of and sinking cities in full force. I mean, they're just as desperate as humanity, and it kind of shows here. It tells you that Jacinto is pretty much the last bastion for humanity, so I mean, humanity is down to absolutely nothing, which paints a picture of it just being completely more dire and desperate than the first game, which I didn't even think was possible back when I played these games. Like when I started this game, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> How, how are we going to come back from this? Then also, there's the introduction of Benjamin Carmine. I think everyone's favorite. Uh, maybe Clayton is everyone's favorite Carmine now. I'm not really sure, but I really liked Benjamin's arc. I guess he kind of has a little bit of an arc in this. It's not amazing. But the thing I like about him is if you choose to do the introduction and uh, tutorial with him, it actually is cool because it's a guise for this war vet Marcus training this recruit. Even though I will say that the tutorial, if you choose to do that with Ben, is very slow and boring. Uh, and also Benjamin Carmine telling or asking Marcus what a wretch is just doesn't make any sense to me. Like he calls it a monkey dog thing and you're like, dude, humanity is pretty much extinct. How do you not know what a wretch is? It just, <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. It looked like a, a weird monkey dog thing. Also, uh, the, the important thing of this intro, which I find the first game didn't really have a lot of, is it plants the seed early on with Anya and Dom and Marcus about what the heart of the story is going to be, and that is Dom's search for his wife, which isn't really touched on in the first game. He kind of mentions in one of the camps that he's looking for someone, and that's probably because they didn't even know if the first Gears of War game was going to work, so they put it aside. But that is the true heart of the story, even if it isn't the main purpose. Then, once you get into the hospital after the introduction with Car uh, Ben, if you choose to do it, um, you meet Ty, and that's probably one of the most badass introductions to a character in any of these games. He is super cool. I think his design is way more cool than his actual character because I thought his character was so underutilized, but you don't get that obviously till later in the game this is all about the intro so it does really work here also you kind of get the, the gist of how psychotic ty is like he's not really like all the other characters you meet in this franchise like he has a quote in this after you fight the locust in an administrative area where he just says i like the glow of locust blood in this light with an mm. in front of it and it just it just it's, it's fucked it just comes off so weird what this game does that Gears of War 1 didn't do as well is that they had a bigger budget, so they were able to show that this feels like a real war. Their scale is a lot more serious, there's Reavers coming in and dropping foes off, it just feels a whole lot better. I mean, the budget was there, does it- where does this go? Where do you think this should go? Because, like, like, the budget's better, it feels better to play, but also, like, I like the short and sweet version of Gears 1. Uh, but it sets up the story for Maria, so it's like, uh, I don't know, you know, I'm gonna put it in beefy as well. I'm gonna put it there. I think, I don't know, this is so hard. Doing these things is hard, man. Like, I don't... <sighs> Because my opinions, uh, I don't know. Okay, anyway, we're just going to move on to Gears 3. Gears 3, I, I really love the intro to Gears 3 because it has that dream sequence with Marcus as you get to see more insight into how he views himself and his actions that got him into prison in the very first game. That's where it picks up. It touches on his guilt and his sense of failure that he sees between trying to, you know, focus on his duties but also save the people he loved even though the people that he loved being his father wasn't really concerned about him, he was concerned about his work. And it's also kind of funny because this dream sequence is almost like an antagonist to the narrative because it paints a picture of okay, Marcus did this, his father is dead, but then in all actuality, it turns out that the whole driving force behind this story is his father is alive and you have to try to find him. What Gears 3 also does that the other two didn't do is that this intro allows the players to kind of breathe a little bit, to get to know the world a little bit and where humanity is at, which the last two games just plunges you right into a war. You actually get to walk around the ship and see that a lot of stuff has changed since the end of Gears 2. The Lambent are now everywhere and there's new variants of enemies that even Marcus doesn't know about. Also feels a little fresh with the more vibrant color scheme. There's still a lot of drab browns and grays and stuff like that, that the franchise is kind of known for because it still is very desperate. But there's also lots of yellows, greens, and blues in this that I really appreciated. And you can also 
tell through those colors that humanity is starting to thrive a little bit. And the art direction is, is still great too. It's one of the highlights that I love about this franchise is like the dark gothic setting, but it's also kind of like eclectic with European influences and, and cathedrals almost, and Renaissance architecture, stuff like that I really appreciate. And one of the things I love about this intro in Gears 3 is when you're fighting on the ship, if you look out across the water, you can actually see the devastation that humanity has suffered. Like, landscapes, entire cities are being sunken off cliff sides into the water. Like, it just, you can tell that there's just not really anywhere safe for anybody unless you're on the water. And even then, you're not safe. We also get to meet Chase, which is a new character. I think he was in Gears 2, but you don't really ever meet him. I think I think that's true I don't know don't don't quote me on that Chase I love his introduction because he's just trying to get candy out of a vending machine and he doesn't even give two shits that this candy could potentially kill him or give him the worst Hershey squirts in the world he's going for it and I I respect that a lot good on him also I just like him as a character and this introduction is solid and then we also get to see that Anya the war is so desperate that Anya the intel is now actually fighting boots on the ground with everybody this is a plus too just just me being biased i guess this whole thing is kind of me being biased even though i'm, I'm trying to, to play both sides but the armor designs in this game are fucking awesome i think this is the best looking the armor designs have been in any of the gears games i love the way they look in gears 5 it's probably the most high fidelity armor we're ever gonna get in a gears game but like man the, the overall the, the sleeveless designs of of the armor and and the characters in this fucking awesome so <sighs> Where am I going to put it? Because Gears 2, it sets up the story of Dom's wife. And then this, it's a lot more about Marcus, which I think was overdue. Because we didn't really learn a lot about him in the first two games. And this game is pretty much all about Marcus. I really like this intro. I think I'm going to put it in absolute slaps. That's, that feels right. I think... Yeah, th th that's the thing <laughs> with these games is all of the intros are all, like almost all of them are really good but maybe not the next game and the next game is gears of war judgment ah oh, this game they um well i don't know if you know but this game was kind of developed by epic but not really they gave it to people can fly because people can fly and epic games did bullet storm together so they're like hey why don't you just do like a spin-off and this takes place before Gears of War 1, because it is about Baird and Cole's squad, and how they eventually meet up with Marcus. But the thing is with this game is it just tells a story, but it's completely, like, besides the narrative, the way they form the gameplay around this. Because it's really just an arcade shooter with challenges, and the story is just kind of a vessel to push all of it forward. I wouldn't really say the story in this is very good at all. But the intro is indicative of that. It's very weak. Um, I like the premise a lot of Baird being put on trial, like entering a tribunal because of his he disobeyed orders. That's a really interesting way to open the game. I don't mind that. It's just that like the the colonel or the the general, I don't know. I don't even, can't even remember his name. Like I can't remember anybody's name in this except for like Cole Baird and Paddock because he's in following games. And the thing is, is like, he's doing this tribunal in an active war zone because he didn't like what Bear did, even though Bear did the right thing. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. But then you get into the gameplay and it feels good. It feels just like Gears 3, a little bit different because they tried to like do modern control schemes for competitive play because they really wanted a competitive scene, which why does every fucking game have to have a competitive scene? I don't understand, but they did like the Y to the switch weapons instead of the d-pad and stuff it just felt weird and it it felt too forced and there's a lot of cool segments in this like fighting the locust under a burning tree and stuff like the art design was very good but i gotta i gotta admit man it's it missed the mark for me honestly like did i have fun when it came out absolutely i thought it was a blast is it a good gears of war game not nah, really it's just not very good and there's things in it that don't make any sense like you can choose to do to find the gears of war symbols in it and get extra challenges and they'll change the narrative like it even matters and some of them just in, in canon wise they don't make any sense like buried fighting glowing wretches i don't even think that's a thing until gears of war one right i don't think a lot of people know about them so anyway yeah it just to me it didn't make any sense but we're getting on to gears five or four five <laughs> i'm getting ahead of myself we're on gears four gears four is a game that a lot of people have issues with i think a lot of people like it but a lot of people have issues with it because it feels very almost tonally different from the other games, especially in its art style. It has a lighter tone. I get it. I honestly do get it. But also, I fuck with Gears 4, okay? I like the characters. I don't think they're as good as in Gears 5. They don't really have a lot of growth in this game. But as far as intro goes, this fucking intro fucking slaps. I'm, 
I'm going to put it up in absolutely slaps already because the thing with, with Gears 4 is you can tell right out of the gate that the Coalition really respected the source material and wanted to add something new to the franchise but also to not forget the history of it because you literally in the prologue of this game play through the entire history that you never did before. So you play through the pivotal moments in this game being the before, the beginning of the Locust War, and the end of the Locust War. So you play through the Pendulum Wars alongside Dom 2, a younger version of Dom, which is awesome. And then from there, you go into a merchant state with Kim, and you fight alongside him, and it feels, again, like a real war. Like, there's real stakes. And then you go into the end of Gears 3, where you're fighting with Colonel Hoffman at Anvil Gate. And it just sets the stage for a game that's going to be... A amazing with like a very high budget very good gameplay and then it goes into meeting the new cast which is you know Dell and then Marcus's son and Kate I just think it's an all-around really good intro like the gameplay the added elements they did to it and setting the stage for what it is the only thing I don't really like about this intro is that Kate has this really hand-fisted monologue that pretty much foreshadows the entire game but it's so like on the nose it's it's kind of crazy um she's talking to JD about this butterfly cocoon and she talks about how it like crystallizes and reforms itself to be something beautiful. And that's literally what the swarm did, except they're not beautiful. So it's kind of the opposite of that. But I don't know, just kind of felt weird. But I like the introduction of all the characters and Kate's uncle. And there's there's opposition between JD and him and how he's kind of a drunk. And also there's the angle of them being outcasts as opposed to being COG. They're against the COG. And it kind of makes sense that in a new world, the COG would be oppressive, and that's an angle I don't know if they really explore as much as I wanted them to, but I think it's a really interesting angle for an intro. And you go through, even though fighting robots feels very wrong to me in this franchise, like, if you're not fighting something and seeing blood, it feels weird. But I think as a whole, like, everything you have to go through with the pro prologue, the main mission, I, I think it really works. All right, the next one is is a mobile game. You guys know how I feel about that if you watch my last tier list. Mobile games suck. And uh, Gears Pop. I didn't even know this was a thing until I started making this video. I looked it up, watched gameplay. There is really no intro. It's a mobile game. There's no story. It's just about collecting, signing in to do your daily stuff. Like, it's just a grind. There's microtransactions in it. It's just stupid. Don't, don't, don't even gotta explain anything. It's dumb. It's dumb. It belongs there. And then we have Gears 5. Okay, so Gears 5, another game I liked. I liked that they changed the perspective to Kate because it kind of made sense. I don't know if they really did it justice in the story, but it did make sense from a story perspective at the beginning of the game to make her the main protagonist. I personally even like Kate as a main protagonist and a lot of people don't, which is fine. I just, I do, okay? I also like the subtlety of her kind of slowly losing her mind from her locust hallucinations that she's having, which is also in the intro title crawl. Thing. And uh, there's a subtle thing in this too, but the intro where they're flying in and, and Kate's having nightmares and Marcus asks like, you having nightmares? And she's like, yeah, does it get any better? And he goes, it gets tolerable. That's, that's peak Marcus. Um, Everything is super great though. Like the action, the silo segment at the end, like the set piece where you're running through, you're trying to get the missile out. Exploring this abandoned research facility on this tropical island. Beautiful gameplay is so good. I really like the progression. Dell, I, I wanted more from his character, um, but he's all right in the intro, especially his love for Jack. He it makes him endearing. Um, the conflict between Marcus and his son when he, you know, he goes through the silo when he's not supposed to and risks his life and is an unnecessary risk. So all that's very good, especially even being able to like try to use stealth and introduce the stealth in this game, which I think did work. Not really in the, the theme of Gears, but it did work. And then also, what else? Oh, the choices. You can They present a choice to you where you can uh, call in two different kinds of robots to help you. And the action's just so good. I, I think it really works. And also it brings back the horror vibe too with you and Dell in the uh, sewers or the exhaust port fighting the juvies. Um, God, this intro was good too though. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where this goes. I think I'm going to put it in slaps, just not as hard. Actually, no, I'm going to put Gears 2 in slaps, just not as hard, and Gears 5 up there. That seems right to me, because I think that's better than... I don't know, because then the Dom thing, and I don't know. Anyway, we're not getting caught up on it, because it doesn't matter. It's just a video game. It's just video games. It's fine. And you guys all have your tier list, which I want to know, so... Like, comment, all that stuff, please, in the comments below. Um, share with a friend. But next is Gears Tactics. I'm going to come forth and just tell you that I do not like games like this. I do not like strategy games. I just find them very boring. I don't think there's a lot of reward to them personally for me. If you like them, super cool. I'm not just going to say that this game is terrible though, because 
I not a, not a fan of the genre because I did play through the intro. I think it's pretty good for what it is. It definitely tells everyone what the story is going to be about. Um, the characters are cool. I like Gabe. I think Gabe Diaz, right? Yeah, he's he's um, Kate's father. Yes. Uh, the character designs were all really good, and it taught me how to play the game very well. I understood it very easily. It just kind of also seems like there isn't a ton of depth to it, but I I, I don't know. I'm gonna put it in getting a little mad because also eh, it was it's okay to me. Um, it's definitely not bad. I don't think it's bad. I played about two hours of it and I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'm going to go back and play more though. So I'm going to put it there. You could be angry with me. That's totally fine because you can make your own tier list and take pictures of it and show me or something. Okay, last is Hive Busters. Hive Busters is a strange one because it, it doesn't, it's not, it, like part of it doesn't feel like Gears of War to me. It almost feels like a Fast and Furious style spin-off to me because it, it kind of replaces like the, the dread and like the depressing themes, even though Gears 5, you know, had vibrant colors and stuff. It was still kind of drab and depressing. Hive Buster just kind of gets away from all of that. It, it, it angles into that later on. Like it's only a three to four hour expansion. So it, nearing the end, it gets a little heartfelt and stuff, but most of it is very exaggerated banter. And I also love the intro of them in the condor flying into a storm and Max telling this very like hyperbolic story and he's like being very emotive and stuff and he's talking about his uncle when he had this toy he his uncle knew that he knew about it but he tried to let on that he didn't and then his uncle like kicked the action figure and surprised him and basically the moral of the story is he doesn't like surprises and what comes right after he says that a big surprise they end up crashing on an island and parachuting out it just feels very like vin diesel-esque like driving ferraris out, out of the dubai tower like it's ridiculous but it really works and it also brings in themes that aren't really known in the story i guess which would be like mythology and like ancient ruins and the tropical island theme really works and you go from like fighting in like wetlands and swamps to being on a beach side and fighting swarm coming out of the jungle at you the characters are eh they progress a lot more as you play it, but as intros go, I don't think they're anything incredibly special. And they're also very like, hey, hi ho, and stuff like that. Does it go slaps just not as hard though? I don't know, I, I do really like that intro though. It just feels very different from the series. How do I feel about this tier list in general? How about no, definitely Gears Pop, because just come on, man. Like I'm so sick of every company thinking that they need a mobile game just so they can tap into every market because they want the most money possible. Like just have some integrity and put something out that is worth putting out. You know what I mean? Like don't just do shit to make money do stuff that you enjoy doing, do stuff, partake in projects that have meaning behind them. You know what I mean? Like this could have been Microsoft's doing, I don't know. But Gears 3 absolutely slaps. I think so, man. Like Gears 4 definitely belongs there because of the whole prologue that leads into the intro. And I think it fills that time gap well. And also, you know, the difference between the OG trilogy and the new trilogy, it just makes sense. Gears 1, I like that intro. Quick, easy, sets the tone, the art style, the combat. Gears 5, I love the intro to Gears 5. Um, Gears 2, Slap's just not as hard, it seems kind of harsh. I don't know, I think Hive Busters does go there because I do enjoy it, but I think it's like, it's kind of out of the realm of Gears a, a little bit. Um, Gears Tactics, a little man, I'm gonna say for me, even though I do recognize that it is fun, I get why people like it, but also as intros go, is kind of eh. Fighting through the Hammer of Dawn Strike though is pretty cool. Also, I do like that Chairman Prescott is also a part of this and Gabe Diaz hates him because ever, everybody hates uh, Chairman Prescott. Miss the mark, absolutely. I almost feel like How About No should be down here. The only thing that's saving this game really from being down there is the gameplay is, is solid. Like they touched on it a little bit more after Gears 3 and they just made it work. Even though I don't like the new control scheme, I think it's dumb and, oh, let's have competitive play. And they, you know what the other thing they did in this game that I'm ranting about now is that when they did the multiplayer for this game, they took the locust out completely that didn't fucking make any sense like you're fighting other cock soldiers like why i don't know people can fly i think they're talented but like god dang that was a dumb move and then yeah honestly i think that's the tier list uh, i'm interested to see what you guys think though because i know like uh, some people disagree with my takes on the halo games and that's totally fine like i you don't have to agree with me i think that's great if you don't agree with me because it means we're different people and we can learn from each other why do you like the games that i don't like or why do you pit them above others while i put them lower you know what i mean like i really want to hear that stuff from you guys so let me know if you also enjoyed this video because i enjoyed making it and uh that's gonna be all for this one so uh what's the saying you know what it is come on you know good night
and good lunch.